G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Caitlin and I'm an American living in beautiful Sydney, Australia. After living in Australia for a year and a half, I finally went back to the States with my husband Mark. We've been back for about a month and the reverse culture shocks have definitely sunken in. I've already made a part one to this video if you want to go check that out first. Today we are doing part two reverse culture shocks of what it was like going from Australia to the States for a couple weeks and now we're back home. So if you want to see what those reverse culture shocks are from an American's perspective, grab a Bicky, grab a cuppa, and let's get right into this video. Number one is Wawa. And I have a feeling so many people are looking at me like, what the hell did you just say? Guys, Wawa is a type of servo up and down the East Coast in the States. You'll particularly find it within like the tri-state area, like Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Delaware, but it's kind of sprinkled all up and down the East Coast. And let me tell you, it is like a servo on steroids. In fact, it feels really weird calling Wawa a servo, to be honest, but it is a big chain of servos that is absolutely incredible. You get hoagies homemade, they have so much delicious food there, and then it acts like a regular servo where you can get gas, because you are over in the States, we call it gas over there. You can get snacks, you can get candy, you can get sodas, whatever. It is a lot like a regular servo, but somehow so much better. It is tough to describe. It is, it is like a very Philly-centric place to go, and it is huge in there. It's a little bit overwhelming at times. Let me tell you, they have some amazing food. If you just want to stop and grab something for lunch, grabbing a Wawa hoagie is just an iconic part of living in Philly. And in case you were curious, Wawa got its name because of a town in Pennsylvania called Wawa. So that is why the stores have this name. Number 12, America has delicious food with huge portions, you guys. I know everybody likes to pick on America and the American portion sizes, but let me tell you, you get the bang for your buck over there in a lot of places. The food is huge. You normally get like two meals out of a typical serving in a restaurant, to be honest. And it is delicious food. You can sit there and laugh about how much salt and sugar is in American foods, all the preservatives in there. You know what? At the end of the day, it tastes absolutely delicious. I know so many Aussies who are hooked on some American foods after trying them. In fact, we even brought some foods over for friends and family to try. We brought over a couple of New York bagels for people. Let me tell you, the food over there is phenomenal. Is it healthy? You can make it healthy, you can go to the healthy places, but for the most part, no, it's not. But it's so incredibly good. Number three are the trucks in Texas. Oh my god, you guys. And when I say trucks, I'm talking about what we call utes over here in Australia. I'm not talking about trucks like Max and Freightliners. No, the trucks in Texas, oh my god. I grew up around pickup trucks. Like my aunt owned a pickup truck. Mark had a Nissan, what do was it? Nissan Navara, that was it. Mark had a Nissan Navara for a couple of years, and let me tell you, they don't hold a candle to the Texas edition trucks that you will see going up and down the roads there. They are massive, you guys. I mean, these are like behemoths. It is insane how big these cars are. And I'm also looking around going, these cars are so damn clean. Like, does nobody go like four wheel four driving? Does nobody take these camping anywhere? They're sparkling new, so many of them. And they're gorgeous trucks, don't get me wrong, but I'm like, isn't part of the point of a truck to like kind of go out in nature and beat it up a little bit? Like, I feel like a truck is supposed to be like loved and abused just a little bit. Now, these trucks are gorgeous. They even have little signs that say Texas edition on the back of them knowing that you can only buy them in Texas. And a lot of people are very proud to have Texas edition cars over there. But seeing the size of their utes compared to the ones here in Australia, they don't quite measure up over here. Number 14 are the grates and the steam vents that you find in the sidewalks, particularly in Philly and some places in New York. Now, this was a huge shock for Mark. I didn't even realize this was a thing. I never bothered to look at the floors in the Sydney CBD and realize, hey, there are no vents, there are no steam grates. But apparently over in the States, it is a huge culture shock for an Aussie to see it. So they have these grates that you just walk over. They have these steam vents that you walk over and you will see steam billowing up out of them. Yes, it is warm. It's a little bit sticky. It's not the most comfortable thing to walk through and they do kind of smell. 
but they exist. And Mark was so surprised by that. He thought it was something you'd see in cartoons or old timey movies and something that just wasn't around anymore. They're still very much around and if you're walking around in heels, you definitely need to be careful. I've definitely done that in the city when I was working there before. Just my heel went right through a grate, fell on my ass. It happens. So be careful if you're walking around because you do have to worry about grates and steam vents over there. Number 15 is how many machines are asking for tips now? I've talked about tipping enough on this channel. I think you guys are tired of hearing me talk about the 20% tips when you go out to a restaurant. But it's gone beyond wait staff now, you guys. I'm talking even regular fast food concessions now give you the option to tip, and it's getting out of hand. Like, the whole point of tipping in restaurants over in the States is basically to supplement the wages that waiters and waitresses aren't getting over there because their minimum wage is under $3 an hour federally. Now we have people who are at least earning minimum wage, which again is still incredibly low to a very unfair advantage. I will not get to that in this video. But... Now it's at the point where if somebody turns around and hands you a bottle of water at a concession stand, it gives you the option to tip. It has gotten so incredibly out of hand. It's very frustrating and some people make it incredibly awkward if you're going to put no tip. Now there are a lot of people who work in the customer service industry who now know, okay, when somebody swipes their credit card, you go do something else. You turn your back, you let them put in a number if they want to and sign off on it on whatever pad you're using these days. Um, some people did not get that memo and would give you the dirtiest look if you hit no tip because they handed you a bottle of water and a pretzel at a game. The tipping culture in the States has gotten so out of hand and it is so frustrating to deal with. I think it's also led a little bit more to this feeling of entitlement that people who work minimum wage jobs who have these tipping options are entitled to these tips when you're literally already getting paid the full wage that you signed up for, that you agreed for to do this job, it's just so frustrating to see now because it was bad enough in restaurants. I never minded tipping my hairdresser, she was absolutely lovely, but tipping Uber drivers, tipping taxi drivers, tipping waiters and waitresses, it's like no matter what you do, more and more people are just going to latch onto this tipping system because it means that they're going to get more at the end of the day and companies have to pay less. Number 16 is there are some seriously aggressive people over in the States. Now there are two major instances that pop in the head when this happened. One of them was when we were in New York and we kind of got hustled out of like 10 or $15. They were trying to split me and Mark like away from each other. It was this group of three guys who basically just handed us these QR codes for some CDs that they had made that we can download. And I'm trying to get away from one guy. Mark's kind of surrounded by two of them. And they ended up hustling him out of $10 for charity or something, which I'm sure wasn't even charity. But I'm like, it felt so unnecessary and aggressive and I was actually a little bit scared. I'm like, my husband's over there, like stop with this whole like distracting me and pulling me away from him thing, just no. I mean, these guys, they were good hustlers, I swear. If we could get them at like some of our fundraising events, oh my god, you guys, we'd make a freaking fortune with these guys. They are talented at what they do. But yeah, it just felt so unnecessarily aggressive and I had a similar instance in Philly not where we were being hustled out of money, but we had a duffel bag that we weren't going to be able to take back with us. We'd reached our limit for the check bags that we could bring over. We didn't want to pay another $200 for a bag that was going to be half full. So like, okay, we'll just eat some snacks today and tomorrow before we leave and we'll give the bag to somebody. We've seen God knows dozens and dozens of homeless people while we were over there. Maybe one of them could use it. So as I'm packing your stuff up the day before we go to leave, Mark goes to go downstairs and give the duffel bag basically to the first homeless guy he sees and while he's there giving the bag to somebody another homeless guy comes up and starts bugging Mark for money. The other guy says no I want money. Then the guy who walks up tries to steal Mark's vape out of his hands. It was ridiculous. There's so much unnecessary aggression over in the states that I've never seen anywhere over here in Sydney. People over there have some nerve, I swear. Oof, yeah, it is tough over there. So if you're going over there, just be forewarned, you're going to deal with people who are way more aggressive than you are used to seeing here in Australia. Number 17 are basements. I forgot that most Aussies don't have basements. I'm just so not used to it. I figured, okay, we're in this, our little like one floor ranch home. It's pretty traditional kind of house over here in Australia. I forgot how common basements are over in the States. 
Uh, my parents have one that is unfurnished that is just full of stuff like there's a fridge and a deep freezer and all the holiday decorations and the gardening supplies. Anything you would put in a shed they have stored in their basement basically. And that is very, very common over in the States. In fact, my grandma and my aunt live with one of my cousins, and they live on a fully furnished, like, bottom floor basement because it's easier for my grandma to get up and down the very few steps that are there compared to anywhere else in the house. Even just getting up to the first floor requires going up, like, two little sets of stairs just to get to the front door, so it's much easier for her to move around. But Mark was surprised, like, there are furnished basements that people live in. That's pretty common over in the States actually for people to turn a furnished basement either into sort of another lounge area or even an entire different bedroom. Whereas over here, I have not been in a house in Australia that has a basement. They're so rare. It's not common to see and you'll have a hard time finding it. Whereas over here in Australia, one thing that we have here that is not in the States are granny flats. Granny flats over here are becoming incredibly common to the point that it's really frustrating because it's difficult to find any place with a decent sized backyard that doesn't have a granny flat attached to it. So yeah, that is something that you definitely won't find over in the States, but it's very common here. Number 18, you guys are really gonna pick on me for this and in all fairness, go for it because I deserve this. Um, people from Philly are incredibly proud that they are from Philly. Yeah, I bring it up all the time that I am a Philly girl born and raised. I've been around friends and family over in the States who talk nonstop about what it is like living in Philly, being born and raised in Philly, how wonderful Philly sports are, Philly, Philly, Philly. In fact, that was even my nickname from Mark for years. He still once in a while calls me Philly. So yeah, people from Philly are just incredibly proud that that is where they're from. And I feel like that's common in a lot of major cities over in the States. You hear a lot of people from New York talk about how they're proud to be from New York. People from Texas talk about how they're proud to be from Texas. It is a very, very common thing. But, um, yeah, people from Philly are almost obnoxious about how proud we are to be from Philly. And last but not least that I'm putting on this list is the interchanges on the freeways. Like, the freeways over there are incredible. They're insane. Like, if Cindy adopted the same sort of style, we would never have to deal with traffic in any of the major cities here. Again, I swear. The interstates are incredible. They are massive. You give like four lane highways going each direction multiple ones like crisscross and going overhead like I'm throwing in pictures just to give you guys an idea because I'm so bad at describing this particular thing especially when I was putting this list together I'm like I have no idea how I'm going to explain to people just how different it is but the highways over in the states are pretty incredible and we would deal with so much less traffic if there was some way to adopt a similar system over here I don't think that's ever going to happen but man it would be nice not to have to deal with the traffic going in and out of the city so that's it for part two, you guys. Did anything on this list surprise you at all? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you commented on my first video, did you get anything right? Did you actually list something that you were expecting me to talk about in this video? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank if you guys like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button down below. It really, really does support me and help support this channel. I so appreciate the support, you guys, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.